Long years ago, we made a tryst with destiny. Fifty years ago, now, India made a tryst with destiny. When we shall redeem our and all civilization had rediscovered its youth. 300 years under British colonialists had stripped the country of its physical and intellectual wealth. Only the soul was intact. It was the leadership of Mahatma Gandhi and Jawaharlal Nehru which provided the moral strength to the masses mired in degrading poverty to transform themselves. The founding fathers of the Republic envisaged a democratic polity as a means for social and political change. They visualized a learning society where every member was striving to evolve into a better citizen. The Indian constitution provided equality in opportunity in education and resolved to turn the country totally literate within 10 years of attaining independence. High population and paucity of funds prevented the country from attaining this goal. However, the target had been identified and a beginning had been made. The resolve to transform India into a learning society found expression in the efforts of both the government and voluntary agencies. The government sector not only provided jobs, but also provided opportunities for learning. The voluntary agencies too began to educate both the organized as well as unorganized workforces. Their hard work began to pay off. Small tribal and village communities began to transform themselves into societies where learning and living moved together. This is South India. The barren terrain is the result of unplanned exploitation of forest resources, leading to denudation and soil erosion. In such an inhospitable environment survives a community of 44 families of indigenous people, members of Kambalathu tribe, claiming to be descendants of a legendary king, Virappan. The community of people alienated from their forest, uncertain, isolated and unaware of the world outside, barely survived at a very primitive level, hunting for small game and even field rats, and gathering roots and berries from the sparse remaining forest cover. Life was indeed very hard. About 15 to 20 years ago, a voluntary agency, Sibai, working in the surrounding area, first came into contact with this community. The community elders realized that the natural habitat had been too depleted to support the Kambalathus. Neither the forest nor the agricultural land had anything left in it to sustain them. The land erosion had to be stemmed and the forest had to be saved. For Kambalapus, change followed from the realization for change. A little help, a little training along with literacy gave this community the motivation and drive to change their circumstance. Close interaction with Sivai and the outside world showed Kambalathus that literacy is not only about the three R's, but it is a lot more. It is an empowering process which allows them to reflect and make informed choices about themselves and their social and political environment. Women of Kambalathu, bound by tradition and rituals, are increasingly shedding their diffidence they have come forward to train themselves in making jute mats. Weaving. Sewing.
and typing to earn additional income. This participation in economic activity is not insulated from acquiring basic learning skills. The women feel quite comfortable using new technology. The growing participation of women has also increased the number of children going to school. In fact, the first generation of children is now finally going to school. Children show heightened awareness and commitment to absorb education. A balwari or a kindergarten too has been set up to provide children the stimulation necessary for their balanced development. True to a learning society, this tribe is absorbing and adapting new skills and means to improve its lot. The community realizes that the environment needs protection and therefore special efforts need to be put in. More trees are being planted. Special care is being taken of the saplings so that they can withstand the elements. Exposure to the outside world has given them the wisdom to have permanent houses rather than the temporary thashed abodes in which they had been living for so long. The voluntary agency has helped the community to take loans from the government to construct houses. Experts from the voluntary agency have taught the tribals of Kambalathu to use local skills and material to build these houses and ensure a cleaner habitat. The Kambalathu tribe has increasingly become aware of basic health. Before Sivai took charge of this community, there was both a high death and birth rate. The tribals increasingly used the health center set up in the village. This center provides health care to both mother and child as well as awareness about public and personal hygiene. Even though television has a major pull on the easy-going tribal, the Kambalathus refuse to give up their pastoral culture of community dancing and singing. Come evening and the happy natives sway to the rhythmic beats of their percussion instruments. These songs have absorbed the message of change and exhort the Kambalathus to move on. These 44 families in this pitiless part of the South Indian state of Tamil Nadu provide evidence that there is no end to self-improvement in a learning society.